and welcome back. So today we're going to be going over raycasting and specifically how to affect objects that we are raycasting against. We've done a few things here that I want to go over and then we'll get started with the actual raycasting. So we've made a, another scene which is going to act as a prefab much like the cube before where we instantiated the object and this scene is going to be our laser effect. So I've created a mesh instance, I've made it a cylinder here, and I made a new material that was glowing. And I'll leave this up to you. All of the previous tutorials should go over how to do it, each one of these steps. It is important to note that I have left the forward direction, that is the opposite of the blue arrow, pointed towards the end of the, the cylinder. I've also left the cylinder one unit long. The reason why is that if we leave it like this, we can scale it as far as we want and we can have a laser that is the exact length we want. Obviously, we would replace this with better effects if we were making a proper game, but for the time being, this will suffice for what we need. There is also one other thing. I've added a script here and there is a C sharp version of the script as well. And all it does is create a timer, connect to that timer and call the remove function at the end of that timer. Timers are an incredibly powerful part of Godot, and them combined with tweens can do a great deal of things. But for the time being, this will act as a removal of the laser. Basically, after the given amount of time, in this case, a tenth of a second, it will cue free or delete this laser object. So what we're going to do is first we're going to create a blaster. So this is going to be a box mesh and we're going to put it under the camera pivot here. And let's just make it a CSG box. And let's generally make it the right shape. So we'll go ahead and move it down to the side right here. And we'll move it just a little bit forward. And I'm going to tilt it down ever so slightly so it's a bit more in line with the direction of the camera. Almost like a third person shooter style. Then within that, we're going to go ahead and create a Raycast 3D, much like we've done in the past. And I will just move that to right there. Let's go ahead and put this as zero and put that as 100, mm, negative 100. So we'll go ahead and we're also gonna create a child node here. This one's just going to all of our blaster logic. So we'll just call it blaster control. And last but not least, let's go over here to the cube. And we're going to create, as a child of the static body 3D, and we're going to create a damageable node. And all this is going to do is handle any damage. The reason why we separate things out like this in Godot is this allows us to take this exact damageable node and throw it onto any object, and it will just work out of the box to damage that object when we hit it with a blaster. We're going to go ahead and create a couple scripts. These are going to be, actually, let's call it damageable. And we're also going to create a new script for blaster controller. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing in Godot script. And you can see we've done that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and step in real quick into the damageable side of things. And that will be much simpler. And once we have that up and running, we'll go back and implement the blaster side of things. So let's go ahead and open up the scripts. All right, so first we're going to be creating a couple exports. We are going to start with a Geometry Instance 3D, which is pretty much how you reference any mesh in Godot. Then we're going to need a couple of materials. One will be the base material that's exposed all the time, and the second will be the hit material that is displayed only when the target is hit by the blaster. Following this, we're going to go ahead and create a float that will be the amount of time that the material is displayed as being hit. And I did a little bit of fiddling and about a two tenths of a second looks best for this. I did actually miss this on the Godot script side and have to go back and re-implement it here in a second. So first off, all we're going to do is display the hit material. And this is on the on hit function. So this will only occur when the blaster hits the target. Then we're going to create a, a timer, much like we did, or much like I did in the previous one for the deletion of the laser. And you can see I go ahead and implement the flash duration on the Godot script side. 
and the timer we're going to set of course to the flash duration and we're going to create a connect on that timer with the timeout so this will be occurring when the timer is completed on the c-sharp it's a little bit more complicated we have to do create something called a new callable and we have to reference this object and the on reset function and on the godot script it's a little bit simpler you can actually directly reference the script and hit dot bind as opposed to inserting the name of the script as a string and then of course we're going to implement the reset script which is just going to set the material override back to the base material all right so we're back in godot and real quick i'm just going to add an on ready function uh, or ready yeah and i'm just going to call on hit when the ready function gets called just for testing purposes and we'll go ahead and add over here on the damageable we'll just add that damageable godot script and let's real quick i've already made the material so we'll just drag those in for base material as well as batty hit and we need to select the mesh reference so that it knows what to change the material of and let's just set that to something big so that i can tell and we'll set it to five seconds and let's hit play and we have errors. Let's see what those errors are. All right. So what we needed to do in this particular case was call deferred, which will allow the node to actually be instantiated into the tree as opposed to trying to call material changes before the node is even spawned. So as a result, we've got it up and running, but we won't need that in the final project. What we will need is the code that we've already built. As you can see, we do have a little blaster there attached to our character. And as we look up or look down, it moves around just fine. But we, when we click, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and get that blasting effect in there. So this is important in a Godot script. In order to reference another class like I'm about to in the blaster controller, I have to initiate that class name up here at the top and we can call it whatever we want. In this case, we call it damageable. And this is done automatically in C-sharp, but it is not done automatically in Godot script. So I wanted to go over that, make a point of that when referencing a class like this, you have to define the class name. So we'll go back here and we'll continue. All right, so we're just gonna clear out the ready and process functions as we won't need them. And we're gonna create a couple of exports here. The first one is going to be a Raycast 3D node, and this is going to be the actual Raycast for the blaster itself. And we're just going to call this Raycast Controller. And next up, we're going to need the packed scene for the laser effect. This is going to let us actually spawn the object much like we have in the past i will note here in the c sharp side we do implement the get and set keywords this can be very handy because it allows visual studio to display references within the actual ide you can see the little four references there and this can be handy for debugging just seeing where things are referenced i don't end up actually using it here but it is probably good practice for you to get used to it if you're using C sharp. Now I go ahead and implement the input function override and I check the input event for mouse left click and we're just going to go ahead and fire shot function whenever the left click occurs which doesn't exist but we're going to go ahead and make that next. within the fire shot function and the C sharp will catch up here in just a moment. We're going to go ahead and instantiate the laser effect as a node 3d, just like we have in the past. And then we're going to go ahead and assign its global position and global rotation to the Raycast current global location and global rotation. This lets us go ahead and put it at the end of the barrel.
Following this, we're going to go ahead and check to see if Raycast controller is colliding. And if it is, we're going to set the scale on the z-axis of the laser to the distance between the impact point and the laser's global position. This lets you stretch out that laser effect, that cylinder, all the way to the impact point, which we are referencing using the Raycast controller dot get collision point, much like we did in the previous Raycast video. And it is important to note here that we're not going to be affecting the X or Y scale. That way we don't get stretched out lasers. But we are affecting the Z scale. So that is the forward and backward scale versus the up and down and left and right scales. So we're just going to put in the new laser scale dot X there in, and new laser dot scale dot Y in the vector 3. Following this, we're going to go ahead and get the object. So the way this works is that we get collision, get collider, and that gets you the object that the Raycast collided against. And then we're going to cast that to a node on bo in both cases. And then if that node is not null, we are then going to get the child of that node, which is called damageable. And we're going to cast that to the damageable class. This is a little bit complex when you first get started. However, once you have done this several times, you will get a bit more comfortable with it. Make sure to use the get node or null here and then check to see if it's null. Now we can do this all in one line on the C sharp, but we do have to use two lines in the Godot side. And this lets you only affect the objects which have a damageable node as the child of the collider that we just collided with. And that is within that if function right there. And then we can just call the collider on hit on the Godot script side of things. And then on the C sharp side of things, we now have the new object, which is of type damageable here. And we will call it hit target. And then we'll just within hit in that fun hit that if function, we'll just say hit target dot on hit. Now in the else function, we can go ahead and just set the scale to the maximum scale. This way the laser shoots off into infinity if you don't actually collide anything. This can seem to be a very complex way, but once you get the hang of it, this is a very clean way to get the object that you are damaging if it is available and if it is not to ignore it. All right, and we're back in Godot. So let's go ahead and implement, and we'll just hit Blaster Controller. And I did not build yet, so let's go ahead and build. And over here, you can see we have the Raycast 3D, so we'll need to assign that. We'll also need to assign the laser scene that I created before. Drag that in right there. And let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So when we point around and fire anywhere, nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Let's double check. Right. So we have it as Godot script, and here we're going to need to set it to damageable in C sharp. And so let's go ahead and, and throw that in there, and let's put that down to something a little bit more manageable. I forgot that you have to keep the languages the same. All right, and there we go. Every time you shoot it, it flashes, and now you have a target for target practice. Not an extremely complex system, but it certainly gets the job done. All right, and that's about it. So much like timers, you do have tweens, which can do things like scaling an object over time and making it bounce and things like that. And I think we'll go into that in the next tutorial. But for now, this will be all. So a little bit of news regarding the, the channel. I noticed that we've had a bit of an influx of subscribers, and I very much appreciate that. Please enjoy your stay. I will not be posting any videos between March 12th and about three weeks following that, as I will be out of the country for personal matters. Thank you all so much for your interest and your comments and everything that you've been saying and all the positive feedback that I've been getting. And hopefully we'll be going into tweening next week. And if you enjoy my videos, then by all means stick around through all the usual means. But regardless, thank you all and have a wonderful day.